Dear friends, join me in conversation with Mr. Yuri, a principal data scientist. Welcome back, Yuri. Thank you so much for joining back. And uh, I am very curious to understand when you were a student, what was your dream? And why did you choose to become a data scientist? And most importantly, what challenges did you face in the process of becoming a data scientist? Sure. Uh, looking again back at my student life, uh, I had an assurance that I've selected the right thing to be in the computer science field. Uh, and I thought that everybody around me, uh, they are having a passion in what they do. They had great professors, great teachers. Many of them came from the field. So it was not only academic, it was sharing of the right. particular industry knowledge. And uh, at that moment, I continued to push forward to study as much as possible around, uh, well, I was successful. Uh, but throughout the student life, I was uh, thinking that I've seen only uh, my hometown, the town where I study right now. I haven't seen the world. Right. And everybody around me were passionate about, you know, moving somewhere, explore, exploring the world, moving to the States, to Australia. Uh, we had a club of uh, those who wanted to go to New Zealand after graduation. Right. Everything was seemed to be so green and, uh, you know, beautiful there. Yeah. Uh, that was my uh, dream, honestly. It was not related to computer science or something. I thought that I want to see the world. But uh, same as before, it happened to me to realize that I need to select something in the field which will be unique, rewarding, and I should not be among others uh, who are doing the same work, let's say. I mean, uh, right. because uh, the challenge here comes that you will be, again, average. Uh, you will be right. in demand, you will be hired, but you will be among many others who are doing the same work and it will not push you outside of the boundaries which you have. Right. Uh, somewhere around uh, maybe again two years before the graduation for the university, I started to work to, to, to see how it is in the real life. Uh, it was very much challenging. Everything which we were taught was slightly different. Uh, the focus was on different things. And I quite quickly grasped the idea uh, of the quality of the standards of the following specific patterns when you develop a software. Uh, but I saw one thing there, that a framework is changed by another framework. One programming language is replaced by another programming language. Right. Uh, there is nothing stated there. Like you all the time have to study as a computer scientist, as a software right. developer. Throughout your life, if you want to be successful, if you want to stand out. And I try to find something which is fundamental, which will not change so much, that I can bring this knowledge uh, throughout my career and I will be, you know, standing out because I know it. It's challenging. Not everybody can uh, get into the field. Right. At that moment, uh, Corsair was booming. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not booming, but you know, it, it started to be there. Andrew NG, a uh, famous right. professor now in the in the science field, right. uh, he was, I think, just founding Coursera, and there was a very first, obviously, uh, very famous nowadays right. course from him. It was uh, machine learning in general. Okay. At that moment, I didn't even know what's machine learning. Right. We had subjects on AI, artificial intelligence in general, but it was, you know, so much blurred and not clear how to develop something decent, something that can, you know, prove to be uh, unique and rewarding and helping others. Right. Um, at the same moment, I was following a course from Google. They were talking about AI in general, about algorithms which can be used about bias bias networks, about A star algorithm, about neural networks, but it was, you know, very much too broad for me. I focused on machine learning and uh, I think it was the right choice looking, you know, in the right. past and nowadays it's yeah. everywhere right now and the whole world noticed the presence. True. Uh, and I saw that uh, the algorithms which are there, the gradient descent, the, you know, the principles of your data preparation of the way how you tune hyperparameters, the way how you choose the splits, this is fundamental. At right. least it seemed to me at that moment. And I thought that that's something which I need to, you know, to have a bigger focus on. 
but in the industry, it was very much new. Uh, nobody knew what to do with machine learning, how to use it. And you're doing just a software development role. I was a team leader at that moment. I right. moved from Russia to Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the course I started uh, in Russia, but there was no practical uh, use for it. Right. At work, neither in Russia nor in uh, in Abu Dhabi at that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I started to pursue uh, managers with whom I worked, uh, product owners, to explain them what possibilities it can give us. Right. Even the face search was at that moment, you know, uh, something which was uh, under the cover. Only a few companies could do it, and they cost it, uh, not, if not millions, but hundreds of thousands for sure, right. just to buy their license. I showed them that we don't need to buy their software. We don't need to spend so much money. We can do it ourselves. And I've tried to explain to them how to do it. Okay. Uh, the message was getting very hard, honestly, because it was something very new. Uh, but at the, the same time, I saw so many applications of it in the right. field that they will revolutionize everything what we, we do. Okay. And uh, the challenge, the biggest challenge here was to... Uh, to find the right path to see that machine learning was having some pivotal moment in the industry right. and also to pursue others to prove them that this is important, this is useful. Uh, so I, I would say that uh, somewhat I was lucky to choose the right path, but at the same time, uh, the principles which guided me to, to choose it, to find something fundamental, something which will not be changing from framework to framework, which you'll right. have to study all over again. Uh, this, I think, was absolutely the right decision. Okay. Uh, to find uh, unchangeable things in the ever-changing world and to capitalize on those, to, to build your, you know, your career path right. uh, in this particular stream, in this particular field. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, it still keeps to be a challenge to explain machine learning to people. They see a right. mystery behind it. Uh, we are trying with my team and with my colleagues all the time to explain that there is a fundamental basis which it dwells on top. Right. And the benefit it gives. Now it becomes easy and easy with every year. Uh, everybody saw chat GPT. The whole world understood that there is something ongoing. Also, it has started many years ago, obviously, with computer vision, with breakthroughs, with uh, from Jan Likun and yes. from those in the field. Right. Yeah. So that's oh. how it looks right now. Uh, ever wow. changing still, that's, but there is an amazing journey, Yuri. I think you shared a lot of, lot of insights. Um, from the data science field, we started with mathematics and then, of course, the machine learning and the choice you made in the past. And it was a risky decision, but yes, I think it was a smart decision as well. And now everywhere it's artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, I think. Um, yeah, so you are one of the tech leaders, I would say, no doubt about it. And I'm sure <laughs> you are a solution provider and for any problem that exists or that's maybe coming in the future, you are there to tackle those problems and provide a fantastic solution and make, with your expertise, make everyone's life better and um, yeah, easy. Thank you so much, Yuri. Really appreciate your time. And I'm sure uh, all those uh, um, students who want to uh, build a career in the field of data science, your insights will for sure help them a lot. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you, too. All right, Yuri, thank you so much. Welcome back. And uh, I am now really, really interested to understand what is the future of data science and what is your advice to all those aspiring data scientists? Sure, uh, I definitely have thoughts on this. Uh, you know, machine learning started to be, and data science in general, a thing for a few for those who have either maybe some academic studies in PhD or those who have spent a lot on the field, but it needs to be a particular company which is ready to provide machine learning solutions. So it's definitely something unique, prestigious, and, uh, you know, uh, not everybody can enter the field so easy. Right. With uh, maybe not so revolutionary, but uh, with evolutional but very noticeable change uh, in the world with introduction of chat GPT, everybody started to doubt their positions. Even software engineers started to doubt that they will find work in the future. Right. Uh, the large language models are doing it so much easy for them. They do mistakes, obviously, but 
people started to think that even the junior positions already can be replaced by a all-knowing machine that generates code for you just on the expression of the natural language. You can right. type what you want and it will give you a piece of code, which is most of the time is workable, maybe not an ideal solution, but it can be a foundation for your proof of concept. Right. At that moment, I uh, so I, I don't agree with this. I don't think that we will be replaced. Uh, I have some, you know, philosophy, which I uh, got from the book by John Wright. Mm -hmm. He is a science fiction writer. Uh, he he has a trilogy. Uh, the first book and the trilogy is called altogether is Golden Age. Right. Uh, he talks about tens of thousands years uh, in future from from this standpoint from from now on. Okay. He talks about advances in computer science, about artificial intelligence, about artificial beings. Okay. He calls them sophotex, those that. Uh, thousands if not millions ways smarter than a human being okay. he talks about advances in uh, uh, genomics about space travel and he describes a society how it looks at that moment wow. his key character is uh, an engineer mm -hmm. uh, his name is phaeton okay probably it's like you know a reference back to the greek mythology right. uh, the person who flight too close to the sun and eventually oh. <laughs> landed and died in the sea Whoa. Uh, but he is an engineer, and uh, in this age of so advanced technology, how can he still be an engineer? How it's possible? Everything should have been done by machines for him. Right. But uh, his life and his experience is explained in the way that uh, he's knowledgeable enough to know how to properly use these instruments available. He knows what questions he asks machines. He knows what tasks he gives them and frees up himself from doing those tasks. Right. Instead of being uh, deep in solving some critical but low optimization problems, you know, being stuck at something particular useful, but not so much useful for the bigger picture, he solves the bigger picture. He tries to solve things which unbelievably uh, uh, seem to be unbelievably hard before right. but with the help of uh, advanced algorithms artificial beings he directs them he gives them a challenge in tasks explains what needs to be done but he's still a driver right because he knows what they can and what they can do they're strong and weak points so no matter what happens in the future it's a very broad statement and bold statement i think uh, there will be always in need and those who understand how the things work right. maybe not so deep anymore they don't need to be so deep mm -hmm. like uh, software development started with assembly language but nowadays right. we are operating with uh, high level programming languages uh, this will change. We might not have to program how we used to do it before. We might have to express things which we need to do in natural language. Right. And that will be a revolutional moment, definitely. I don't think that it yet it has come yet, uh, but it will be inevitable in the future. Okay. But there will be still a need in those who understand what questions to ask. Mm -hmm. There is a belief that machines will understand everything, just you need to wish. You need to wish properly. You need to express the desire properly. Even now, one prompt for ChatGPT gives you better result or worse result only right. because you know how to do it. Right. And uh, it's just a new subject for us to study, uh, to get accustomed with and to master it. It will not replace us. It will make us more powerful. Right. And there will be all the time a need for those who started with Excel, with the formulas, move to visualizations, right. then understood there is a machine learning, there are algorithms that can be utilized, they can train models, they can uh, make uh, some software which was impossible before. It will be become easier for them to do it. And uh, the, those who understand this uh, will be successful in the world going for forward. They need to understand that the world changed, but this, still there will be a need for those like Phaeton who knew how to use things around him, who still was an engineer even tens of thousands years past, he was solving different problems. He was thinking how to ignite Jupiter. He was thinking how to, uh, you know, to settle people on the, on the ring around Saturn. Right. He was solving very different things which are impossible right now, only because right. he knew how to use those instruments and he still was an engineer. Right. So that's our future. That's my belief. And advice for data scientists, don't give up, 
don't think that you will be replaced. You will be different. You will not be doing the things which you're doing right now. You will be doing different things. You will be empowered to do things which were not imaginable before. And they will be needing you. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. What a, what a fantastic way of um, uh, visualizing the future of data science. And then thank you so much, <laughs> uh, Yuri, for sharing all those practical insights and uh, the expert um, advice to all the aspiring data scientists. And I, I'm sure they will never give up in the process of <laughs> becoming a data scientist. Amazing. Thank you so much, Yuri. And we will continue our discussion. My pleasure.